Hey guys, my name's Dustin Jamalowitz, and uh, I'm making this video to let you know that I just passed my uh, FAA Part 107 drone test, which will allow me to do commercial work with drones for the next two years. Um, thought I'd maybe share my thoughts on the test and uh, let you know how I studied for it. Um, I didn't pay the hundreds of dollars that you get from a lot of the websites out there, and if you have common sense, it probably isn't required. Um, what I used was the YouTube video from a photographer guy named uh, Tony Northrup, and I'll put a link in the description below to, to his video, and it's, uh, it's really great. It's about uh, an hour and a half, and he goes through pretty much everything you need to know. Um, even better, he has a link on his website where you can get a printable guide because he, he goes through a lot of numbers that you need and um, if you're the type of person that's visual and you need to look look at that, you can print it out and it's frankly fantastic. It was probably about 90% of what you need to know on the test. Um, things do change, I guess, from time to time on the, on the videos, but um, yeah, overall it was really, really good. Um, the other thing I used was an app for my iPad. It's called uh, Prepware Remote Pilot. Sorry, you see me looking down as I as I read, but uh, Prepware Prepware Remote Pilot. Um, a couple bucks, and to be honest with you, it's worth it as well. It had a lot of questions verbatim as to how they're asked on the Part 107. So if you can uh, learn learn those questions, learn the answers, um, it's really a great resource as well. Um, I put in, I probably watched Tony's, Tony's video about two, two or three times. I don't know, not three times. And today as I got to the test, I, uh, just played it in the background for a few minutes to go through those numbers again as I read the numbers and that, that put them right in my head. Um, go through the test multiple times. Uh, what they're really looking for is they want you to respect the private pilots and any, anybody in a, an aircraft um, and that's really a good thing because if you crash your drone into a plane and it's your fault because you don't know the rules, and you might be out thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, but you could potentially kill somebody. Um, and I think that's really what they're trying to get through with with this certification course. Um, uh, big thing on there is airspace. Um, there is an air chart for me for the Dallas Fort Worth area. Um, most of the questions I, I missed on the test were related to this. Um, I actually spent a lot of time reading sectional charts. I could go through and I could tell you everything about them now. Um, but for some reason the Dallas, Dallas map threw me off and the guy who administered the test said that that is a, a, a problem a lot of people have and it's, it's even something that uh, people taking private pilot tests have issues with as well. So make sure you read up on your airspace. Um, it was probably... A lot of people say 25% of the questions, but for me, it wasn't it wasn't about that. I, I think um, I think I had about maybe eight. So it's uh, it's it's a it's a chunk, but it's it's not the uh, 15 or so you would expect to make up 25% of the questions. A um, lot of common sense. If you have common sense, you should be able to walk through probably about 60 to 70% of the test. Um, for me, they also put an emphasis on like reading the METAR reports, which are like weather reports from for the uh, airports. But um, I only came across questions 56 and 57 were the only ones that really came up as uh, METAR. And these are, once again, they're shuffled randomly. But um, yeah, the METARs, if you can learn to read those, you might get more questions than I did. I was frankly expecting more. And I was kind of disappointed because if I would have had more of those and less of the Dallas questions, I would have uh, I would have gotten an even better score. I, I ended up with a with an 82, which isn't fantastic, but it's well within the passing limit. So I, I'm happy with that. And I do I know a lot of my my uh, questions I got wrong were related to to the actual um, airspace and in particular using that Dallas Fort Worth map, which which is a monster. Um, Going through though, I would say the test is really easy. I, I took 32 minutes to get through those. Um, for me, it was almost like the first 15 questions or so were all just common sense like, hey, who is in charge of something? Well, it's the remote pilot in command, which is you. Um, asking questions about visual observer and what they do. Um, 
things like that. So really easy was a big chunk. And by the time I got to those those Dallas questions and the airspace, I knew I pretty well had the test in the bag at that point. So um, what I would say is if, if you're looking to take the test, don't freak yourself out over it. Um, I had a lot longer to prepare for it than I wanted. I, I actually showed up to take my test and the, the guy that was supposed to administer it was in the hospital and um, the testing agency never contacted me to reschedule. So I had to wait another two weeks to take it. But um, I, I kind of psyched myself out. I did extra studying because I thought I'd forget everything. But once you learn it, it's really not bad. Um, make sure to just use those two resources. You really don't need to pay a couple hundred dollars something like Drone U or the UAV Coach. I'm sure they're great resources, but you don't. I mean, I, I think whatever the cost of the app was, maybe four or five bucks. Um, and Tony's video is free. You just sit through some ads and. Yeah, you know, that's it. Uh, you you can pass this test off of that. Um, do your homework, and you should be all set. And good luck to you.